the financial industry is changing and it's changing at rapid pace. And the role of AI and cloud becomes more and more important, for example, in customer experience, but also in fraud detection and, for example, in democratization of AI via APIs. So combined with the challenges of working from home, there's enough food for discussion with our expert today. Stefan Schmidt-Tank, he's the head of financial services specialist team at MEA at Amazon Web Services, and he is here to update us with all the last developments. Stefan, welcome. Well, thank you very much having, for having me, Ronald. Yeah, it's great to have you. And, and what we've seen in 2020, 2020 was a very unusual year due to this pandemic. How did the pandemic impact the financial services industry? And um, how did these financial institutions, how did they respond to these type of changes? Well, we're, we're going through a technology transformation in the financial services industry that's unlike any other that we've seen in our lifetime. And it's actually happening at a very startling pace, much, much, much faster than we could have anticipated. Now, what we've seen over the last nine months is that the pandemic has actually accelerated that digital transformation and the move into the cloud. Now, agility and the ability to innovate quickly and get ideas to the market fast have always been important for the uh, for banks and insurance companies, and, and so have security and resilience. But now in the last nine months, these uh, features have been have um, proven critical for the reaction of financial institutions to the pandemic. Some other trends that we have seen reinforced by COVID-19 is a move into digital channels, um, the need for uh, better fraud analytics, and also the need for customer analytics to enable financial institutions to personalize their services. Now, if you take digital channels as a starting point, I mean, um, that has obviously affected um, banks and the payment companies particularly. Um, as everybody stayed at home, shops were closed. We've seen an uptick in digital transactions, um, whether that's payments transactions or banking transactions. And so firms had to reallocate resources to their digital channels to scale up the capability or capacity to deal with this uptick very, very quickly. And scalability is something that Companies that build on AWS are very familiar with already, I mean, if, whether that's banks like Barclays, HSBC, or BBVA, or whether that is payment companies like Klarna or iZettle or Stripe. Um, and so what we've seen in the last nine months is firms scaling up their digital channels and enhancing them significantly to enable customer interactions where personal interaction wasn't possible. And also uh, to um, protect customers by, for example, offering um, contactless payment services. Um, scalability has also been important for capital markets and key, for keeping the markets running. So we've seen a global investment bank, for example, in, um, scale up their high performance computing grids um, in response to unprecedented volumes and volatilities in the markets. Um, unfortunately, in times of uncertainty, fraud always thrives. And so we have seen um, f uh, banks or payment companies and insurance companies use machine learning to protect their customers from fraud. And as the economic conditions change and so does consumer behavior, um, financial institutions are also using analytics at scale to understand that new consumer behavior and understand their customer needs better. So for example, um, credit card companies are crunching bun uh, uh, tons of transactional data to analyze change spending behaviors and, and adjust their award systems and reward systems, for example. Yeah, and you were addressing this digital channels change and, and the fraud detection change. What role does cloud and AI play in this to facilitate our organizations? Now, on, on one hand, we've seen the cloud help customers address the impact, the immediate impact of the pandemic directly. Like, for example, for BBVA, who have been able to establish remote working for 86,000 employees worldwide. 90% faster than they could have done it on premise. And they used a service from AWS for that called AppStream, which is our fully managed um, application streaming service. Um, but if you look beyond the immediate impact and, and take it more of a strategic perspective, you actually, you actually see that the, the importance of the cloud goes way beyond that and is, is much deeper because the cloud enables financial institutions to um, be more agile and react faster to changing um, circumstances. Um, to deliver innovation quicker to their customers and also to use data analytics um, at scale to understand customer needs better. And that hinges a lot on the ability to first scale infrastructure seamlessly and very, very quickly. If you can configure and deploy thousands of servers 
in the matter of just a few minutes. Um, and that it gives you a completely different way to react to, to changing environments. And that allows you to scale up or down your resources, your infrastructure, and your IT resources in line with your business needs and really only configure what you or deploy the resources that you need at any point in time. Now, get, taken together with the fact that you only pay for what you consume, that becomes really attractive in these kind of situations like we've seen over the nine, last nine months. But the other thing that's important for our customers is the ability to um, um, use a plethora of um, technology cap technological capabilities on AWS to build solutions faster. So they, customers can use over 175 services that range from compute and storage all the way to artificial intelligence, machine learning, or IoT on AWS to build, so go from idea to implementation much, much faster, um, and therefore also respond to customer demands much, much faster. And we'll keep adding new services to, to that portfolio at an in ever increasing pace, like we're doing, for example, uh, at the moment, um, during the, our, our customer learning conference, reInvent, where we're announcing a whole bunch of new and very interesting services and features that um, allow customers to build new things. And that matters because that means they can go to, they can get to a, a new solution at a, in, in record time at the end of the day. Take, for example, uh, Klarna. Um, when it comes to scalability, it's a bank from the Nordics that has been founded in 2005 with uh, aiming to make online shopping easier. Um, they ended up building their core banking system on AWS at the end of the day, um, and that allowed them to scale up their core banking and uh, with the transactional demand they had. And that mattered for them already before the pandemic. They have seen in the U.S., in their U.S. business, they've seen the number of consumers they were serving increase sixfold in 2019 and because they were on AWS they could scale it up seamlessly and when it comes to building new solutions quickly that was mattered a lot in the uh, in the during the pandemic um, for example when it was um, when there was a need to operate um, call centers and contact centers remotely as people couldn't come into the building so we've seen a um, global bank for example expand their remote call center capabilities um, um, with Amazon Connect, which is our cloud-based omni-channel contact service solution, uh, contact service, um, um, and they are, um, and so they use that that uh, Amazon Connect to make sure that the calls are routed to the right agents based on skill and availability, and that um, the customers' issues were dealt with swiftly and quickly. And now with with services like Contact Lens, which is machine learning capability built into Amazon Connect. Um, customers can actually analyze calls, detect trends, or identify, um, um, for example, um, risk um, exposures in customer calls by using machine learning. And we've just announced this week the ability to screen ca um, customer calls in real time with a contact lens so that you can actually um, find out when a call goes um, the wrong way and intervene before even the call ends. So these are fascinating capabilities um, that the customers have. And that also applies to data analytics at the end of the day, um, which is particularly important right now because the data is changing rapidly as a result of the pandemic. And those who can change the algorithms quickly um, will actually have a competitive advantage at the end of the day. And it's never been easier to collect, store, analyze, and disseminate data then in the cloud, and, and that's not just because it's more cost effective, but also because the capabilities um, in, in analytical, ser of analytical services you've got on AWS are, are just um, so much wider and, and change the possibilities you have in data analytics. Yeah, and you're working very closely, as you mentioned, with all these financial institutions about all these new ideas. You're really at the forefront of all innovations and, and discovering new trends. What can we expect the coming months? Well, undoubtedly, Ronald, I think we'll see a lot of innovation happening in the industry using artificial intelligence and machine learning. And in, in the fullness of time, actually, virtually every application will be infused with machine learning to some extent. And, and most customers that we work with are interested in machine learning. So that includes customers like Liberty Mutual, for example, or FINRA, or Emirates Bank, or Capital One, or Ayala Credit. And it's exciting to see what the kind of innovation that's happening in the sector right now. And just take this week, for example, in um, Andy Jesse's keynote at reInvent, um, the CIO of JP Morgan, Lori Beer, reported and talked about how they are using Amazon SageMaker, which is our 
fully uh, managed machine learning service um, to rapidly test and train machine learning models that create value for their businesses at the end of the day. Uh, MasterCard New Data is using SageMaker to identify a user for credit card transactions based on their behavior rather than a password or a PIN. They're streaming petabytes of data into the cloud in order to um, analyze uh, what they call passive biometrics and authenticate credit card transactions. So it's fascinating what kind of innovation you see in there. And while there's an incredibly amount of progress that has been made already um, in organizations with AI and ML, it really is still at relatively at the relative beginning. We think there is a lot more that's going to come, and it's really early for most organizations. And so we've, we, um, what we also see happening on the other end is um, we see a lot of banks and financial services companies more broadly build new customer experience um, and new types of services using open APIs. So the, using the, the kind of programming interface that is really central and core to the cloud services and to microservice architectures. Um, and so we see new business models emerging um, based on these open finance concepts. And take, for example, Solaris Bank in Germany, who are offering um, APIs that provide access to frictionless banking services to non-financial institutions. Um, they just announced this week the completion of their all-in migration onto AWS. Um, and open finance also helps um, establish financial institutions to create new customer experiences. HSBC spoke at reInvent this week about how they have built their global open banking bank platform for millions of customers on AWS. And they're now extending this platform um, to additional products to create a holistic aggregator of financial information that allows customers to make better financial decisions at the end of the day. So as such, open banking or open finance is becoming so much more than just a compliance exercise. Um, it's becoming increasingly a strategic tool for, for financial institutions. And those are just two, um, two examples for where we see exciting innovation happening in the industry at the moment. Yeah, many, many new innovations. And as you mentioned already, uh, AWS reInvent is taking place those days. And we have seen already many announcements, but what else can we expect? Uh, for customers, reInvent is really a great opportunity to learn from peers and other businesses on how they build on AWS successfully. Um, customers can sign up for hundreds of customer presentations, including for presentations from Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, HSBC, Barclays, Legal in General, MasterCard, Vanguard. Um, and what we can also be looking forward to is, is more announcements of new services and new features. We've already got a, a little bite of the cherry um, in, 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 in the first week. Um, in the keynotes that were happening in the first week, but more is to come on machine learning and in Werner Vogel's um, keynote in, uh, in the coming weeks. So it's exciting times and really looking forward to um, learning more about how customers are using AWS over the next coming weeks. And I would encourage customers to, to sign up to any, as many sessions as they can. Yeah, it's definitely something you wouldn't miss. Thank you for sharing all these latest trends and all the things that are coming the, the coming weeks and the coming months and the announcements that we're going to see these days at reInvent. Thank you. And for the audience, thank you for watching and we see you next time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.